I'd just like to say we're successfully through the most boring part of the presentation. Um, I won't go so far as to say this is exciting, but it's less boring, a uh, less, little less tedious. Um, insurance, there are several insurances you want. General liability, this is like someone slipped and fell in your office. Um, workers' comp, which we already talked about, but it's repeating because it's a big deal if you've got people from out of state. Um, errors and omissions is sort of an umbrella insurance that you use so that if you know you make an honest mistake when you're completing something to an investor you will be uh, you will have some insurance in case there's a shareholder lawsuit um, that's kind of an honest mistakes kind of a thing there's also something called directors and offices insurance which everybody should get and nobody does it's specifically a, a, about the liability that you as an officer a, pre, a CEO or a COO or a CFO I get into this a lot because none of my companies want to buy, do it because they say, well, we're startups, we could fail anyway. And I go, yeah, but I'm perpetually living in startups, and so I would like to have this coverage. Um, but it's important to note that the errors and omissions covers the firm. The directors and officers insurance actually covers the individual. So the CEO has an insurance if he or she is sued. Like a, a board of directors um, historically want something like this. And there was actually a lot of concern with Sarbanes-Oxley increasing the level of scrutiny that board, of liability that boards had um, in the accounting scandals uh, that there was actually some concern that they wouldn't be able to get this insurance anymore but that's something that a lot, most all big companies will have startups always ends up being a low priority but it can back it can come back to haunt you because remember it's your personal liability now if you're young and just out of college and don't have any assets who cares but if you've had a successful exit you have a lot of money you have a nice house in Pacific Heights this is something you absolutely want, even if you have to pay for it yourself. Um, tax filings, um, there's a lot of filings that you have to do. Obviously, we all know about our annual tax return, but if you are a business um, it, who is losing money, you still have to file a tax return. And also, if you're in California, there is a state franchise tax minimum of $800 that you were supposed to file last month. Um, and it's also important to note that um, if you are making money, you are supposed to pay the government an estimated income tax quarterly, on a quarterly basis. Um, so it's also best when you're doing tax filings to do it with someone who knows startups. Like uh, I have one client who uses the guy he knows back from his hometown in New Jersey. And you know, he's a well-meaning guy, but he doesn't really understand a lot of the startup uh, ecosystem. So just someone who has some other startup clients is useful. Um, sales tax. This, uh, there are several distinctions. Typically sales tax applies to products and materials. Like if I sell you a printer, there's a sales tax on it, but not necessarily service and labor. So if I repair a printer, it oftentimes doesn't come with sales tax. Now the reason I say oftentimes is because these laws vary. They vary based not just on state, but also on city. Um, and this is particularly important when, uh, the, the, the important factor here is what's called a nexus. So typically, if you are in one state and you sell a product to another state, you only are responsible for collecting the sales tax if you also have an operation in that state. What constitutes an operation depends on that state's law. So that's kind of complicated. It's another reason why it's good to have people in one state. And also, if you're going to hire people in other states, oftentimes there's an exception where it's easier if they're working from home because if they have an office, then all of a sudden that's a nexus and you have to start worrying about sales tax. Now there's an interesting little nuance here. When we buy things off the internet from places that don't charge us sales tax, you know, sometimes they'll say, if you're in California, we have to charge you sales tax. That's because the company is located in California, so they are responsible for collecting it. Interestingly, you're not actually getting out of having to owe that sales tax. It's, you're supposed to report it on your own, and nobody does. So effectively, you get away with it, but technically, legally speaking, you are actually supposed to go to the government and say, oh, I bought this thing in the, this printer from a company in Nevada. They shipped it to me and didn't collect sales tax, so here's your $20 state of California. Nobody does that, but it is, it is technically the law. Um, also, it's important to note, when you collect sales tax from someone, that should be held separately. You do not use the government's money to fund your business, so you should put that money in a place where it's beyond use because at the end of the year when you file your sales tax report, you're gonna need the cash. You can't say, hey, I gotta go raise another round to pay for my sales tax. <laughs> um, and finally, uh, so we, let's see, we talked, about, we talked a little bit about state. Also say the city can make a difference. So I have a client here in California. They, most of their clients are in, uh, most of their customers are in California, but whenever they do an installation for their internet of things on a, at a, at a, a customer site, the first thing I have to do is see which city they're in because it vary, the city has their own sales tax on top of it, and if we sell them uh, uh, an activated product with sale hardware, 
um, I have to calculate that sales tax. And if you get international, typically the, most other countries, especially Europe, they don't use sales tax. They use what's called a value added tax or VAT, which means rather than the end price to the consumer, they, uh, they just add a little incremental tax um, as it moves through the supply chain. So typically in America, if you buy a product, you actually, and, and it's not for your, your company's use, it's for resale to, the, to your customer, you should not be ha paying sales tax on that. Um, and so the, and you, you're a wholesaler essentially. And the only sale tax is at the, at the final sale to the customer. In, um, uh, in other countries, you actually add up a little bit along each step.